see, we grew up in Burma camp, and I think his, in fact, today his sister, uh, uh, what's her first name? It's going to come. It'll come. Tell sister who's a lawyer. Was telling me that uh, if I had said Mauli, the family would have forgiven me because their older brother went to Mauli, and I would have known that because we were in Burma camp together. And I said, Bishop Herman. You see, I was thinking about Francis too. My friend, his, his, his name has now changed uh, to Francis Pamdetti. He's a leader of the immigration. He's one of the immigration regional commanders. Francis Pamdetti is my, my best friend for many years. And he went to Bishop Herman. And uh, we're all in the Catholic Church, me, the Pamdettis, and the Amengos. We're all in the Catholic Church. So I think somehow uh, Francis Tull's uh, Bishop Herman sort of, you know, I don't know what it did to my brain, but Salom Amengo is a true Prisecan, true blue Prisecan. I don't know why I said that. And the military people have been calling me that, hey, the ranger is a Prisecan. You made two mistakes. You said he was airborne force. He's an artillery officer. He's our best ranger. In the place, the colonel is our best ranger. And then you said he went to, he's beside himself with upset. So I have been told that to compensate Selom, I have to take a double shot whiskey to him on Friday, which I will. I'll go to Bermakam, MOD, and he's at the army headquarters, and I'll present the whiskey to Selom, and I'll take pictures with him, and I'll send it to you, because I sincerely apologize. Selom is a true, true, true Odadia. He's the only ranger we have. We don't joke with him. Then Odadia 89 called me. So the phone rang. I didn't know that I picked. I said, hello. I said, Paul Adamotri. I said, when, when the comes like that, then I pause. I said, yes, sir. So I, I talk in a small tone. He said, is that Paul Adamotri? I said, yes, please. He said, but what is wrong with you? Then me too, I started getting upset. I said, who is this on my phone asking me who's wrong? I, I thought it was one of those people. I said, hello. He said, I'm asking you what is wrong with you. I said, ah, who is this? He said, this is the president of Odadia 89. I said, oh, senior. Ah, he said, I'm calling me senior. You went to t- tell the world that our ranger is from Bishop Herman. How can you say that? I said, oh, I'm so sorry. Everybody has been calling me. He said, this one, if you don't correct it, we will delete your name from the other day fraternity. So I don't want my name to be deleted. I love other day the way Selom Amengo loves Presek. Selom was in house four. He was my senior. He's a great guy. And I now owe him whiskey, which I will deliver on Friday to Burma camp. And uh, perhaps we'll take a stroll around Burma Villas, where we used to live together. Uh, 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 Selom's family and my family have known each other for that long. This one, this montage... Uh, on the Odadia song, it's a tribute to Colonel Selom Amengo. May he one day become the commander of the army. Selom, I'm sorry, I apologize. This is for you. <laughs>
Oh, that dear, we are so proud of you, Colonel Selom Amengo, the only ranger that we have, 89-year uh, group, uh, Acro House, I believe, or is it Reese House? I don't want to get it wrong again, but uh, congratulations to you, Colonel Selom Amengo. We are very, very proud of you, all other days, are super proud of you. Look out for me on Friday. I'll come to your office with my uh, present and my apology statement. Okay. Uh, that done, let's now get... Okay, so let me, let me talk about this book a little bit. Now, this is a book by John Austin. I don't know whether... Uh, camera, can you get it? It's a very, very old book. I bought it in 2001. Uh, it's by John Austin. I'll tell you the story about this book. I don't know whether it's, it's an interesting story. It's a very senior politician in Ghana today who asked me to buy this book in, uh, um, in uh, 2001. And uh, I was traveling to London, and he said, when you go, go to Waterstones and get a book that will really help you. It's entitled... The province of jurisprudence determined. Now, John Austin was arguing about the application of law and uh, in what circumstances that jurisprudence should be applied. It's, it's such a powerful book. And I read it then, and I picked it up uh, last year sometime when I was looking at my library, and I said, oh, this book did me a lot of good. It's called The Province of Jurisprudence Determined and the Uses of the Study of Jurisprudence. The Uses of the Study of Jurisprudence the province of jurisprudence determined. It's by John Austin, uh, a famous English lawyer uh, who's written many books, and uh, perhaps you should, you should get it if you're a journalist. I always like to sell books to journalists, uh, not to sell to collect money, but to, to advocate uh, books for journalists. It, it helps your brain to work in a certain way. The province of jurisprudence determined. It's by John Austin. Get it, and let's deal with it. Okay, is it time to mount the touch screen uh, with a cool uh, sort of mind and heart and uh, not say anything and uh, not doing documentaries and interviews only. Uh, without much ado, it is my greatest pleasure to mount the touch screen again. And uh, 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 Rebecca Akufuado is here. I'm going to talk about her. But before I do that, let me say something. This week, I've received a few calls of people who said that, oh, Mr. Paul, the uh, placement has come. And I'm, I'm happy about it. My daughter was placed in Holy Child. My son was in St. Augustine's. My son is going to Presec. Robert Coleman called me. He said, in the early morning, he called me. He spoke in Gam. He said, I don't think I said, Charlie Coleman, I am here. He said, I'm going to go to I said, I'm going to Presec. I'm going to go to Presec. He said, I'm going to house in Kalaya. I said, oh, I'm going to go to the only house. He said, I'm going to go to the house. He said, I'm going And then he laughed. And I heard people laughing. So I knew that I was on speaker. And they all knew I was going to advocate for Ingmar House. It was such a pleasure to me hearing parents who were taking their children to school without any shred of doubt at the back of their mind that two weeks later, their child may be sent home for school fees. This was a phenomenon that was part of our lives. Those of you who are my generation, those a bit younger, this was a phenomenon that was part of our lives. We go to school on day one, two weeks later, some people are going to be called. The headmaster is going to come and call names. Paul Adamotri, uh, Kofi Zebo, this, that, that, that. School fees, go home. And your friends are sad. And you are sad. And a president arrives at the Jubilee House and says, this phenomenon must stop. I'm so proud of Akufuado. I'm so excited about Akufuado having been late president of Ghana. Because for those of us who supported him, now that Akufuado has one year to leave, when he leaves, we have something to say. Those people who came before him, what are they going to say? I don't know. I'm not saying they didn't do anything. But they should remind us what they did. We know President Kufor did national health insurance, which some people understand. Some people don't understand. But as for free SHS, everyone understands it. And Leonardo Danko Kufor, who talked about free SHS in 2008 campaign, they laughed at him. In 2012, he talked about it, they laughed at him. The worst is a guy who called me. He went to Impriso Secondary School. He was in Impriso. And I'm going to interview him soon. I told him when he's on vacation, he should come to the studio and interview him. He was in a price to GSS, SS2 in 2015. His parents couldn't pay the school fees because his father dropped out of a job. And he left in Priceo Secondary School. He was a very clever boy. So the chief of in Priceo was concerned that why is that boy out of school? They said he's going back to Accra because he cannot afford the school fees anymore. He started to learn how to be a mechanic around the area where he lived in Soutuum, that kind of place. And then 2017 came and he was told that with free SHS, you can go back to in Priceo and then pick it up. He went back to Impriso. He took his uh, terminal report. He said he can come. He went to Impriso to uh, uh, complete SS2. He did SS3. 
Guess what? He's in final year electrical engineering at KNUST. That's an amazing story. That was possible because a politician decided that he would spend the taxpayers' money on the children of the country. That's amazing. That's an amazing story. When they say free SHS, you are not going to free SHS to any school at all. You are going to Presec, free SHS, the best school in West Africa. You can walk in with your grace for free SHS and you don't need to pay school fees. Nobody is going to sack you for school fees. That did not used to be part of Ghana's conversation. Today is part of Ghana's conversation because a president decided that the taxpayers' money, the one they say the politicians have been stealing, or every day they say politicians are stealing taxpayers' money. He will dip his hand in the taxpayers' money and give it to the children of Ghana. Today, 1.8 million children have benefited from the taxpayers' money by going to Presec. They went to St. Augustine's. They went to Achimota. Is this Achimota or Addis Adel? You know, Achimota and Addis Adel, they kind of look alike. But this Achimota. Okay. They went to Achimota. I think this is still Achimota. They went to Pokuwari. Where else did they go? They went to Addis Adel College. Where did they go? They went to Prempe College. Where did they go? They went to Holy Child School. Where did they go? They went to Infanspim. Great schools in West Africa. Where did they go here? They went to St. James Seminary, one of the best these days in the, in the, in the BA region. And they are walking in at free SHS. So they walk in to form one. Nobody is going to ask them for school fees. Nobody is going to sack them for school fees. They are going to get their exercise books. They are going to eat in the dining hall for free. If they are day students, they will still eat in the dining hall. That's the amazing part. When I was in Presec, day students they didn't eat in the dining hall. And they would ask us that. So when you go to the dining hall, what happens? And they didn't eat in the dining hall. They were not part of the dining hall. They can eat their own food anywhere. Today, the day students go into the dining hall to eat because Adodankwa Akufuado decided that whatever it takes, for whatever it is, I will invest in the future of the country, of the future of the country, which is the young people. That's, that's, what, what school is this? Ah, St. Francis, okay. Tamale Secondary School, Haruna Igrisu went to school there. John Mahama went to school there. Dr. Baumia went to school there. They all went and paid school fees. Today, boys are walking into Tamale Secondary School. Girls are walking into Tamale Secondary School. They don't pay school fees because Adodankwa Akufado decided that I will give the taxpayers money to the children. Other presidents came, they didn't do that. Other presidents came and did nothing, I'm sorry to say. Other presidents came and did something, we'll remember, but Adodan Kwakufado will stand out forever. That it was him who decided in the, minimum, in the period of austerity, in the 20s, that today I shall put the taxpayers money at the disposal of the Ghanaian children, whether you are Ewe, you are Ga, you are Akan, you are Mampusi, you are Northern, you are Muslim, you are Christian. Akufado says, open the doors of the secondary schools and let them get in. And let them study. And I'm going to pay teachers, whether they are in training or they are out of training. I will pay them. I'm going to pay them so that they can resource the schools, so that the schools can work. I am proud of this man. It is totally amazing. You can say anything you want, but you cannot forget that it was Akufuado who instituted free SHS in this country. It has come to stay. I fight Raymond Atuguba, but one thing I respect Raymond Atuguba for, he said that this free SHS, they have to go to parliament and make it a law so that another president will not come and change it. That's what Raymond Atuguba said. And Raymond understands that because where he's coming from. He knows people where he's coming from who could have never gone to school. Raymond is an NDC person. No problem about that. He was secretary to President Mahama. But he made that statement that they should go to parliament and write out free SHS as a law because no president should come and temper with it. That's, that's, that's what politics is about. Politics is about development. Politics is about coming to be president to do something that has not been done. Not to come and do road and bridge, which everybody does, which we need, which we will continue to do, but come and do something novel, something that sticks on your name. I say that Akufado has written his name in gold as far as the education in Ghana is concerned. He has written his name in gold to include day students. So a, a, a school like Aquinas Secondary School, he built a dining hall for them. Aquinas is one of the great schools in Ghana. It's a day school. He built a dining hall for them. He said every day school, build a dining hall and put the day students in and feed them at the expense of the taxpayer i will educate 1.8 million Ghanaians. i love this man and i'm very happy to say i love this man and there's no question about it which president show me which president did that for young people and you see akufado used the taxpayers money to benefit people that he doesn't know he will never miss them it's not he doesn't have any connection with them he doesn't have any any relationship with them nothing he doesn't know them but he took the taxpayers money and said minister of finance 
put it at the disposal of the children. He said, Ghana will be in debt. Let Ghana be in debt. But let the young people be educated. Because as Reku Brobe said, growing people for Ghana's development. That's the mantra that we need to adopt. We are going to grow human beings. Yes, we'll grow cocoa. Yes, we'll grow plantain. Yes, we'll grow rice. But we'll grow human beings for Ghana's development. That's what Thailand has done. That's what Singapore has done. That's what Japan has done. That is what Akufado is doing. And that is why I single Akufado out for a special mention and say that as far as all the presidents are concerned, he has written his name in gold. This is a guy who never needed free SHS for himself. His father was a successful lawyer. This is a guy who didn't even go to any secondary school in Ghana. He has no affiliation. Yeah, we adopt him as a presec old boy. Yeah, we take him as a presec old boy. Akufado is a presec old boy, whether you like it or not. But he didn't go to presec. He didn't go to Achimota. He went to school abroad, to Lansing College, one of the top schools in the world. So he doesn't, he doesn't, he, he doesn't have a connection. But he came and said education is the key to our future. And I'm going to do free SHS. In fact, I remember in the 2016 campaign, people came to tell him that this is your free SHS. Can you calm down? He said, no way. It is still my number one flagship program. Yes, they brought uh, one district, one factory, which is great. One village, one dam, which is great. But he said, free SHS is my number one flagship program. And today, see what has happened in Ghana. This week, haven't you seen the parents? Haven't you seen how excited parents are? With the computer placement taking their children to school and nobody is talking about school fees. I remember Miss Bell, the famous musician, uh, the NDC lady, in 2018, she took her child to Achimota and she was fascinated. And she started doing a video, hey, the free SHS is true, oh, they didn't ask me for school fees. That's a kufuado. It's nothing to do with MPP or NDC. It's about a man, a politician who has a vision, who understands the future of his country. That's a kufuado. That's a kufuado. And they went to all these schools. St. Augustine's College, they've gone there for free. Park we see Indum went to St. Augustine's College and he paid school fees. Today, people go to St. Augustine's College, they don't, they don't, it's for free. Myself and Ken Lamengo, we went to Presec, we pay school fees. Today, people walk into Presec, they don't pay school fees. Nobody pays school fees in Presec. You know? That's the story. This Achimota school. Everybody went to Achimota school. J.J. Rollins, Mrs. Rollins, uh, Kwame Pepra. All of them, they went to Achimota school. Sphil Gabra, Alan Chermati. They all went to Achimota school. And that's what has made the school great. But they pay school fees. Akufado says, go to Achimota. The taxpayer will pay your school fees for you. That's, that's the story. So I don't, I don't want to go on and on. But the Ghana must do something for Akufado. So when I see Rebecca here... I'm just delighted. Madam, good evening. How are you? Your husband is a great man. And he has done great for Ghana. This single policy of free SHS, your husband has done great for Ghana. And congratulations to you because there's no man that can succeed without a powerful woman like you behind him. Congratulations, Mrs. Akufuado. I think she's a fantastic woman. Don't you see that? Don't you see that? Yeah, I'm hyping here. I'm the hype man tonight. You know, when you go to the musical concert at the club, you see the hype man. Yeah, I'm the hype man too. But my hype is true. It's true and it's based on reality. Now, this is Mrs. Sakufado taking her uh, UPSA uh, degree. And I'm going to show you the photograph. Oh, that's, that's the president. And see how he's delighted, clapping for his wife. Mr. President, you are a great man. Look at this. Look at this. And uh, 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 now I'm looking for a photograph. It's, oh, wait, this is the one I'm looking for. Put that on the screen. And uh, it's, 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 it's a great moment. It's a great moment. And I'm, I know that next September is going to come again. We're going to go through the same process. And when next September comes and we see all the children, we'll do a big plaque. We should do a plaque for Akufado and hang it at the Independence Square. And say, Mr. President, thank you for free SHS. And put another plaque there. said, next president, do something. You know, when we're in the revolution, we used to sing a song. JJ, do something before you die. JJ, do something. Before you die. You know, those days were in the revolution. In the revolution, we sang a lot of songs. Why is this so and why is this so? Akatapoi was there. Yen Yen was there. Zayebo was there. And we sang these revolutionary songs. JJ, do something before you die. So let's put a plug. Let's, let's put a plug and say, thank you, Nana Dodanko Akufuado. Uh, good night. See you. Uh, retire from presidency. Uh, stay at home and keep an eye on Ghana because you have done great. And for the next president, we say, do something before you go. Whoever the president is, do something before you go. I was going to say, Dr. Baumia, do something. I don't know whether Dr. Baumia will win. I hope he wins. I vote for him. I don't know whether he will win. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, this is the family. 
Uh, this is Mrs. Akufuado, his wife, and the family. This is just fantastic. The family must be super proud of their father. President Akufuado has done enormously well as far as education is concerned. And uh, okay, so I end that story. Now, uh, and can they quickly get me the editorial for um, uh, opinion editorial? The, the, uh, uh, the mon is, there, is there a montage? Uh, see whether they can quickly get it for me. Uh, before I get to the, this Kisi Ajabin matter. So I'll start with our flyer and uh, I'll deal with it. Okay. Uh, whilst they look for it, can they play a video for me? Uh, Adana Saribaya announced video where he was talking about source of funds. Can you play it for me? Uh, okay. Is it possible to play the announced video? Okay. Play the announced video. Let's, uh, let's talk about it. He was in Germany talking. Have a look. Where do you get the money? So we are a media house and... We have views, we have clicks, we have radio stations that we go into some form of alliance with. So before we start any investigation, there's a budget. And that budget is what goes into the film. So yes, that's how we get the money. We don't get it every day. I wish we could get more to do what we do, but we try. And we wish we will not be paying more, but sometimes we just have to pay more to get it. For the law you passed on the establishment of the office of the all right. So Anas Aremia Anas says that he's he's a media house. What's the name of the media house? I don't know. Please, anybody can help. Please, those of you who are watching, text me. Anas Aremia Anas says he's a media house. Which which one? Crusading Guide is a, the newspaper that he and Kwekubako have. Is that what he means? I don't know. He says he's a media house and he has a social media page. And he asked, the, the German children were very smart. They said, why do you get the money? Because you paid Kusin Yantechi $60,000. You paid Charles Dubois $40,000. That's $100,000. Then you paid the other lawyer, the chief, $40,000, $140,000. And then you paid other people, all in the space of six months, all in the same Dubai, $140,000 was paid for their work. And Anna says that, he has a media house, his clicks and ticks, and that should be looked at. Where is he getting the money? That's a great question. Where are you getting the money from to do this agent for provocateur business and, and, and bring up corruption? And he says, they are med what is the name of the media house? <laughs> Please, viewers, I beg you. What is the name of Anas Arimiyao, Anas's media house? Because I know of Crusading Guide, which is a very decent, respectable newspaper, very great tradition. I know it. Is that what he's referring to? Uh, crusading guide is print what is views and clicks where, where is the social media page is he referring to his own social media page and calling it a media house or is he telling the germans something that we don't understand where is his media house he says he's a media house that's where he gets sixty thousand dollars to give forty thousand dollars to give to charles and forty thousand dollars to give to the other guy one hundred and forty thousand dollars in the space of one month the media house before then judges were given all sorts of money he's a media house and he gets what clicks and who what is he talking about we, i don't understand i'm not saying it's true or it's not true i don't understand he says we are a that's what he said we are a media house tv or radio which one is the media house print is also a media house but print doesn't do clicks and views and that so what is he talking about these are the things that we need to interrogate properly Proper interrogation of these things must come and it's going to start soon. Tonight, we have sent a request to the Office of the Special Prosecutor. I'm going to share that with you now. Before then, though, those of you who didn't see our flyer, this was our flyer. This is what it is. It says, the pot calling the kettle black is like when anti-corruption crusaders like OSP don't want their, their application of public funds to be exposed. They want it covered such that the public will not know how they spend the public money in fighting corruption. But for God and country, we shall proceed unabated and it will not be bloody nor gory. So we can all watch because this one, what we are doing, is not entrapment. It is not blackmail. It is true. It is the whole truth and it is nothing but the truth. So we urge viewers to join us at 9 p.m. And this is where we are. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to take you into the questions that we have sent to the Office of the Special Prosecutor. Here is our editorial montage because this is fully our opinion. 
recent um, a request, we, we showed on television uh, something about OSP's car. So our concern is that the OSP is an anti-corruption agent, and I'm completely disturbed. Why on social media I see people saying uh, the OSP's uh, budget was leaked and the OSP's budget is the, the OSP's budget ought to be transparent, shouldn't it? The budget that the OSP wants to work with ought to be transparent. So if it is out there in the public domain or we have put it out on TV, what is the problem? And then we, we want to remind people that here in this country, Akufuado has passed the Rights to Information Act. They are anti-corruption crusaders. I'm going to show you the board of the Office of the Special Prosecutor. They are all anti-corruption crusaders. Linda, Mrs. Linda Kwafo, a nice intelligent woman who sits on the chairman of the board, represents Transparency International. I have asked them questions. Were they all sitting on the board when the OSP formulated these kinds of requests looking for bulletproof cars? To, to swing around Accra, did they all see it and they think it is part of anti-corruption? They should come and explain to us. So, to that extent, we have now filed at 4.45 this evening a request. We have formulated a request under the RTI, uh, which is Act 989, an application for the Office of the Special Prosecutor to answer our questions. The questions we have filed ought to be compulsorily answered by him unless, of course, he can uh, ac access one of the exemptions under the Act. And we are waiting to see what his response will be. If he doesn't respond, we'll report him to the RCI commissioner. He will be surcharged. The money will be given to us. We'll buy Mawako. We'll buy uh, Lukman's rice. We'll eat it in the studio. And we'll still file another question. If he doesn't, we'll take him to the High Court. We are going to demand accountability and transparency from the office of the special prosecutor in this country. The country doesn't belong to some people. It doesn't. It doesn't belong to some people to go and sit at Northridge, Roman Ridge, Laboni, and decide what they want to do and do their blackmail and evil work. That's the country. is not for them. This country is to be run according to the dictates of the 1992 constitution, the Republican constitution of 1992, for which Akutu Ampao fought and died, for which people like Kuku Bakwe and see Pratt fought, for which Nana Dodanko Akufado put his life out. That 1992 constitution, we are going to abide by it. We are not going to allow a group of people to hijack the processes with evil. No. So, we are accessing the RTI and its tribute to Akutu Ampao. Akutu Ampao fought for this RTI because right to information is anti-corruption. So, here is what we put out. So, it's our letterhead here. Good evening, Ghana. Uh, Metropolitan Television. And these are the questions. So, uh, this is our address here. And it is written to the board chairman. Mrs. Linda Ofori Kwafo, Office of the Special Prosecutor, 11 December 2023. We've sent it to her. RTI, these are the questions we are asking. Dear Madam, request for the Office of the Special Prosecutor. Application for information concerning the purchase of certain vehicles. Pursuant to Section 18 of the Right to Information Act 2019, Act 989. We write concerning the topic as provided above. We write to your office requesting information to, in answer to the following questions. One, on the second day of September 2021, did the Office of the Special Prosecutor send or cause to be sent a request to the Ministry of Finance and Economic Planning titled Application for Commencement Warrant requesting funds for the purchase of certain cars to the tune of $29,952,000. Is the request for the cast of the office prosecutor, Shraj Iyoko. If when I went to Shraj, I told you even the chairs they are not good. Somebody wanted 30 million Ghana cities to go and buy cars for the office of the special prosecutor. Let's move on. Question number two. If yes, was the said request approved by the Ministry of Finance and Economic Planning? Question number three. If yes, were the funds disbursed by the Ministry of Finance and Economic Planning? Question number four, if the said funds were disbursed, what procurement process was adopted in the purchase of the cars by the Office of the Special Prosecutor? That's a very, very important question for us because the Office, office of the Special Prosecutor cannot hide under the secrecy of his office, the so-called secrecy of his office, so that he can violate procurement rules and he can decide what he wants to do. He is the office of the pros uh, special prosecutor. He ought to be seen to be abiding by the laws of Ghana. And we are going to ask him, and we, are, we have sent it to him already, we are demanding answers from him tonight, that he ought to answer these questions. Ghana is a great and beautiful democracy. 
Because you're an RTI. Those who were talking about Rwanda the other day, Rwanda doesn't have an RTI. Okay, question number five. If the said funds were disbursed, what company, agent, or entity was engaged to provide the said vehicles to the office of the special prosecutor? Question number six. If yes, are the cars being used as at 11th of December 2023? That's the question we are asking. And we say we count on your prompt response concerning the above mentioned questions. Yours faithfully, Paul Adomotri, host of Good Evening Ghana. Hallelujah be to the resurrected Lord. Yes, we have formulated RTI questions. We are not just blowing hot air here. We are dealing with constitutional matters. We are dealing with Acts 989. We are dealing with legal matters and we are going to deal with it. People cannot sit down there and take the taxpayers' money and do what they want with it on the, on the, on the facade that they are fighting corruption. On the huge facade that they are fighting corruption. So they'll take the taxpayers' money, 30 million, and do what they want to do with it. No, that's not going to be allowed. People can support him if they want. I see some politicians supporting him and I laugh at them. Politicians support him just because you are in opposition. You support somebody spending the taxpayers' money. Opposition should be more concerned about how the taxpayers' money are spent. But here, I end this year, a chicks on social media supporting an office of special prosecutor to spend the taxpayers' money in here. Taxpayer, when you see them on the streets, a whistle at them and hoot at them because they are not doing their work well. They are supposed to be, to be the vanguard of the, of, the, of the pest. And we are saying that the Office of Special Prosecutor has questions to answer. Let's go to the board of the Special Prosecutor before we come to Colin Powell. I'll explain something to you now. So a look at the board. This is the board of the Office of the Special Prosecutor to whom we wrote it. The board of the OSP. It has the Honorable Kisia Jabin himself, Special Prosecutor. It has Deputy Special Prosecutor, Miss Jane Lamte. And then it has Ms., uh, Mrs. Linda Ofori Kwafo, who is the chairperson of the board. Mrs. Linda Ofori Kwafo represents Transparency International. I'll be surprised if she's not interested in the transparency of the way in which the Office of the Special Prosecutor works. Linda, you are the Transparency International rep in Ghana. We have sent you an RTI request. You are supposed to be the vanguard of transparent disbursement of public funds. You are supposed to be the protector of public funds. You are sitting as chairperson of the Office of the Special Prosecutor Board. You thought it was okay to take 30 million from the Minister of Finance and go and buy bulletproof cars for Kisia Jabin to sit in S class, bulletproof cars, Office of Special Prosecutor, bulletproof S class. That's what you thought you sit in, Linda. Please answer the question. Mrs. Ofori Kwafo is the rep of anti corruption civil society. She is Transparency International. And I've been talking to Franklin Kujo about this on television. I'm not speaking to him directly, but I'm Franklin, I'm talking to you again. Please, my boss. Franklin is my boss. Franklin, you all of you civil society, you are about protecting the public purse. All of you civil society, you work for RTI. Congratulations. Today, there's a question, and you have to declare where you stand. Do you stand with the Office of the Special Prosecutor that he should buy bulletproof cars and then Shraj should be impoverished? Yoko is impoverished. Attorney General's office used a, a, a little bit of money to buy their cars. All of them are, are fighting corruption. Office of Special Prosecutor is not the only one fighting corruption. This democracy has survived, at least in one instance, because of the Commission for Human Rights and Administrative Justice. Those of us who have been news reporters for a long time remember Emil Short. We remember Anna Bosman. We remember the work that Emil Short did, the very risky work that Emil Short did. Emil Short was fighting PNDC ministers. He didn't have a bulletproof car. Justice Emil Short. He was fighting PNDC ministers. He didn't have a bulletproof car. He was fighting heavy names like PV or B, who were colossal to the Republic. And Bill Short was investigating them under Shraj. We know what Shraj has done in this country. We know what the Commission for Human Rights has done in this country. They, they are, look, look at their office. Totally impoverished. I've been there. I've been to Shraj. I saw their office. And Kisia Jabe and the board of the special prosecutor think that they should buy bulletproof cars. And Shraj should not even have computers. That they should buy bulletproof cars and sit in and roll, run around the country as if they are president with motorcade all over the place. Yesterday, somebody called me and said, that, Ah, Charlie, this Kisia Dabin thing, when you started, I was obsessed with you. But I just saw him. But who does he think he is? I thought it was the vice president. Hey, is that how he moves around Accra? I said, But how do you know it was him? He said, I asked a policeman, that, but who is that? He said, That's special prosecutor. Really? That's how to fight corruption? Okay, no problem. If that's what Linda Ofoyukwafo thinks, she should come out and say it. If Transparency International, the global one, 
believes that part of fighting corruption is to take 30 million, which at that time was 5 million United States dollars, to go and buy cars. 5 million dollars for Kisia Jabe. If that's what Transparency International, the big one, if that's what they think, and they, 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 they have not queried Linda Ofori Kwafu on this one, we have written an RCR request. We are waiting for them to respond. And the RCR request is related, written to Linda Ofori Kwafu. She should come and respond. These are the people at the board. Mr. Timothy Coleman, he's the rep of the Ministry of National Security. Madam Abba Jacqueline Opoku is the rep of Iyoko. Madam Jacqueline, at Iyoko, where you are, do you have bulletproof cars? Do you spend $5 million on cars at, at, at Iyoko? Madam Abba Jacqueline Opoku, at Iyoko, is that what happens? And then this is uh, the Honorable Mr. Stephen Azantilo. He's the rep of Shraj. Oh, yes, Shraj is there. Stephen Azantilo, when you go to your office, those chairs at the reception, don't you need million, one million cities to go and buy it? Office of Special Prosecutor is using 3.5 million to buy two cars. And it is okay because he's fighting corruption. It's okay because everybody must be afraid of him. It is okay because he's an anti corruption agent. It is okay because he has some friends there. I'm not talking about friends in government, I'm talking about his associations, which I will not go into tonight. But is that the reason why he should use three and a half million to buy two cars? Mr. Steven Azantilo, how are you? You are with Shraj. COP Wilfred Boahine Frimpong. He represents the Ghana Police Service. He's also there. COP, your IGP, the Chief Constable, does he have bulletproof cars? So why did you approve bulletproof cars for Special Prosecutor? COP, you are there. Your boss, IGP, does he have bulletproof car? Dr. Dan Pare and the, 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 the ones before him, from Al Hassan to everybody, have they had bulletproof cars at the police headquarters? It was Dr. Dan Pare who came to the IGP recently, who even painted the police headquarters. Go and look at the police headquarters. Put some lights there. Those of you in Accra, you drive past the police headquarters right now. If you, if you finish watching this program, drive past there. You see that it's become beautiful. Dan Pare got some small money and put it there. Another person who says he's also fighting anti-corruption, he is using three and a half million to buy two cars, two Mercedes-Benz, two S-Class, one is light body, one is bulletproof. Three and a half million. That's what is happening. This is the board that agreed with that. That's why I put them on TV. The board of the OSP. This is what they agreed on. We have sent an RTI request to them for them to tell us whether they agreed. And then we will come with our editorial. If they agreed, we will now come with our real editorial. What you have seen is nothing. Once they agree and they re respond to the RTI request and tell us that, oh, yes, we bought the cars, it is then that we will do the proper editorial and we will see what happens in this country because this country is about laws. This country is about the 1992 Constitution. Mr. Lawrence Ndago Ayagiba, he is the rep of the Ghana Audit Service. This calls for a lot of auditing. The whole process calls for a lot of auditing. So it is good that on their board, there's an auditor, Mr. Kofi Buedi uh, Boache. He is the rep of the Financial Intelligence Center. Fantastic. So this is the board of the OSP. Honorable Kisia Jabin, I love his smile, Kisi, and I like his tie too, isn't it? Nice tie. Kisi Jabin, we have sent you questions. Have a look at it. Uh, this is uh, uh, Miss Cynthia Jean. The one I went to the OSP's office back in the day to visit with uh, Martin Amidu, at that time, their office was in Laboni. I went there. Viewers, I think some of you who have been watching this program for a while will remember that. I went there. I went to visit with Martin Amidu. He took me around. He showed me what happens there, blah, blah, blah. Madam Cynthia was there. Nice lady. I said hello to her. And then Martin Amidu was, was taking me around. So I followed him. I, I remember her. She is the deputy. Uh, when Martin Amidu was going, I wondered why she was not just made the deputy prosecutor. Some explanation was given to me. I don't quite remember what it was. But I asked the people in authority that, why don't you just make the, the uh, deputy the special prosecutor and we move on? Uh, somehow that didn't happen. But there was an explanation for it. Okay. L this is my friend Linda, formerly of Legon Hall and XB. And when I talk about Linda, I know her. I know her at Legon Hall. I know, I know her very well. Her roommate is my sister, you know. Not my biological sister, but her roommate at Legon Hall was my sister. I know, her. I know Linda quite well. And I'm asking her, Linda, you are Transparency International. Do you agree that we should shine the light on the request that the OSP has made to the Ministry of Finance on how they are applying the taxpayers' money? Are you there as Transparency International and OSP went to buy two cars for 3.5 million on a budget when Yoko doesn't have money, Shraj doesn't have money? Almost every state agency don't get as much money as they want. And you people went to buy two cars for Kisia Jabe, S Class 2, for 3.5 million? No problem. The question has come. Please answer it. 
Congratulations, Mrs. Linda Ufoyukwa. She has stayed with this transparency thing for a while, and she needs to be commended. I mean, she could have left to go and do some job, but she stayed with the transparency thing, and she's been doing advocacy for it. She's the chairman of Special Prosecutor. Now she has to answer these questions. Uh, Madam Abba Jacqueline Opoku is the rep of Yoko. I've already talked about her. She's also on the board, and she has to also uh, tell us whether uh, at Yoko they do use bulletproof cars. At Yoko, do they use bulletproof cars? And do they buy two cars for 3.5 million? Okay. Uh, Mr. Steven Azantilo, he's my man. You know, he's my man. He's the rep of Shraj. Mr. Steven Azantilo, when you move from Shraj and you go for a meeting at Office of Special Prosecutor, do you see the difference? Shraj has impeccable record in supporting this democracy to stand. The Commission for Human Rights, those of us who are associated with it, it will be in the book. In my book that I'm publishing about the Fourth Republic, Shraj will be there, and I'm going to write my report on the PV Obey matter and the things I saw, the Kamala Dumont case before Shraj, and the things I saw. And Shraj is an important leg, arm of the sustainability of this democracy. They don't get 30 million. In fact, they don't get nothing. Go to their office tomorrow. Those of you working at Cry High Street, get when you are going to office or when you're on break, come to Shraj. You see a woman selling uh, ba banana and katia at the entrance. They have a nice car park, which is well kept. I have to say, their sanitation is good. When I'm going to Shraj, it's clean. But it is old. It is old and it is dying. The chairs are old, they are dying. The rooms are old and they are dying. Even the office of the boss is under there. When you enter the corner, it's just bad. The Commission for Human Rights and Administrative Justice, that has been a support backbone to this democracy. They don't buy two cars for 3.5 million. Enter Kisia Jabe in 2021 and he buys two cars for 3.5 million. And he wants bulletproof. He has four bulletproof cars. One, two, three, four bulletproof cars. Why? Land Cruiser Bulletproof, S-Class Bulletproof, uh, Lexus Bulletproof, and then another one Bulletproof, four Bulletproof cars for Special Prosecutor. Two of those cars are 3.5 million. The rest are together 6 million. So as if we have decent chairs. And, they, and we are all watching. This is the democracy that we fought for. We are all watching that one man will hold the democracy to ransom, collect all the money and put in his wherever. Well, Okay. Mr. Stephen Azantilo, good evening. Our request has come to your desk. Have a look at it. COP Wilfred Boahine, I salute you, officer. Good evening. Please, COP, your IGP, does he have bulletproof car? Does he have four bulletproof cars, Dr. Dampai and the IGPs before him? Do they have four bulletproof cars, of which two of them cost 3.5 million CDs? Is that what happens at the police headquarters? If that's not what happens at the police headquarters, I wonder why you sat on the board and approved this one that the request should go to the Ministry of Finance. I wonder why. Now the RTI request has come. They have to answer it. Mr. Lawrence Indago Ayagi, uh, uh, Ayagiba. Mr. Lawrence Indago Ayagiba. Uh, audit service. Please, can you audit your people about the cars and et cetera, et cetera? Mr. Kofi Buedi Boache is with the Financial Intelligence Center, and I think uh, uh, that is what it is. Uh, so here, the Office of the Special Prosecutor, uh, Section 2, the object of the office is A, to investigate and prosecute specific cases of alleged or suspected corruption and corruption-related offenses. B, recover the proceeds of corruption and corruption-related offenses. Take steps to prevent uh, uh, corruption. Uh, the office shall, within 30 days of the uh, A, conclusion of prosecution of each case or confiscated or assessed, blah, 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 submit a written report on the outcome of the case to the Attorney General. Our next RTI request to the OSP, we are not done, oh, this is the first one. Next one, we are going to ask him the employment. He has 300 people. What do they do there? Who are they? Why are they there? That's the next one. And then this one, has he submitted any report to the Attorney General? Because this is what it says. The office shall, within 30 days of conclusion of the prosecution of each case, or confiscation or realization of property under this act, shall submit a report on the outcome of the case to the Attorney General. Has Kisi Ajabe submitted one single report to the Attorney General? One. From 2021 to 2023, has he submitted a single report to the Office of the Attorney General indicating that he has been able to conclude one matter? Conclude. Which one has he submitted? Apparently, he's concluded that Charles Edouard in one. Has he submitted a report to the Attorney General? Which one has he uh, completed? Has he submitted any report at all to the attorney general? This is the OSP Act. I'm reading from this. This is not us. This is the OSP Act. And then people are going to ask, okay, but why are you doing this? Why are you 
Why are you, why are you doing all of that? We come here. Colin Powell has said something very interesting. And incidentally, do you know where I got this from? Our guest tonight, the professor, uh, when I was chatting with him on WhatsApp, now people were calling me and saying, Charlie, you need to talk to this professor. Did you see him on UTV? And I, I, I like UTV a lot. That's for the Saturday night program. I'm always watching. A plus, how are you? I'm feeling you, man. Okay, so they, uh, they, as I said, oh, I watch UTV quite a bit, but I've not seen him. I said, oh, you should watch UTV news. Charlie, the guy is very good. Two or three people called me. Then a week later, another person called me and said, Paul, you should interview this guy. So I texted him. And I said, Prof, I'd like to talk to you. He said, oh, I've been watching you a lot, blah, blah, blah. So he's here. Tonight he's on our show. Now, this was his DP. You know, when I chat with a new person on social, uh, on WhatsApp, sometimes you check out his DP. Uh, when you check out my DP, you just see the Lion of the Tribe of Judah, you know. But, but when I checked out his DP, this is what I saw. And it says... We have come to, this is Colin Powell talking, one of the best generals in the history of the United States, one of the, the famous men who made the dignity of the black man realize at the State Department as Secretary of State to George Bush, a big general of, uh, of uh, the Iraq War, one General Colin Powell. He said, we have come to live in a society based on insults, on lies, and on things that just aren't true. It creates an environment where deranged people feel empowered. This is so deep, so true, and so relevant to Ghana today. What Colin Powell said is so deep, is so true, and is fundamentally relevant to Ghana today. I take it again. He says, we have come to live in a society based on insults, on lies, and on things that just aren't true. It creates an environment where deranged people feel empowered. Deranged people, they feel empowered. Because the society is, is, is living on facade, lies, and insults. Somebody can mount a whole television program. All he's doing for two hours, a boy, with Jimmy. What, where, what kind of thing is that? Where did we get that from? And people are excited, they are laughing, they are happy. Because the person they are insulting is not them. So... But let me finish with Colin Powell. I'll come to Abam Bagbin. Let me finish with Colin Powell. I'll come to Bagbin. So Colin Powell said this. I don't know when he said it, but he must have said it when he was in government with George Bush, number two. That is before Barack Obama. If that's how American society was then, Ghanaian society is like that today. It's unfortunate. He says, we have come to live in a society based on insults, on lies, and on things that just aren't true. It creates an environment where deranged people feel empowered. That's what I like. Deranged people. Totally deranged. And they rather feel empowered. Speaker Bagman had made my day today. Because uh, in Parliament, an NDC, uh, uh, one of the NDC honorables was speaking and talked about how Special Prosecutor is complaining that something is worrying him and somebody's worrying him, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, Lord Bagbin. Now, I like to call him Lord Bagbin because the Speaker of the British Parliament, his, his name is Lord. He starts with the Lord, you know? So, Lord Bagbin, please, when you see him, tell him that I've given him a new name. He's not the right Honorable Bagbin. He's Lord Bagbin, okay? So, Lord Bagbin said, the passage of the OSP Act was an exercise in futility. I told you, but you went ahead to pass it. I was alone. Speaker of Parliament... A.S.K. Bagbin, also now known by Good Evening Ghana as Lord Bagbin. He's the justice of the appeal, Lord Bagbin. This is what he said. There's a video to this, and I'd like you to see the videos, the one of the ones that we played at the, at the teaser. Show the Bagbin video now. How many minutes? The establishment of the Office of the Special Prosecutor, I did tell you that it was an act in futility. You are not going to achieve anything from that, but you went ahead to pass it. I disagreed with you, but I was alone. Well, I'm very clear in my mind that that authority is embedded in the powers of the Attorney General, constitutionally. Who delegated to who? No, no, but that is not what you put in the act. 
What you just need to do is to is to uh, fund the office of the Attorney General well and remove the Minister of Justice. You separate the two. Minister of Justice is a political appointee. The Attorney General is a technical person and he only is ranked in conditions of service to that of a Minister of State. It doesn't mean they have to be incorporated to Uh, hi viewers, somebody sent me uh, that I didn't put Accra High School on. Oh, uh, uh, please, uh, uh, as they say in the, uh, when you go to programs and somebody is addressing people and he doesn't want to get into trouble, he says all protocol observed. Uh, Accra High, observed. Accra Girls, observed. Fancy Man, observed. Uh, St. Peter's, yes, yeah, very important. St. Peter's, I nearly went to say, I ne I nearly went to St. Peter's. Nearly went to St. Peter's. I was saved by the bell. Otherwise, I would have been Pescoba, but instead I'm um, Odadi. Which is better? I won't say anything. Viewers, you decide. I won't say anything. So, all protocol observed, all schools observed, mentioned uh, in that short report of mine. Uh, it's now my pleasure to get to the young people to tell us what people are saying about our show. I think Fatih will start. All right, so this is coming from Nana Kwesi Boateng, and he says, Paul, but how much corrupt money has Kisi Ejaben been able to retrieve for us since he became the OSB that he's demanding this huge amount of money for cars coming from Hajia Halima? He says, as for the OSB, I had a lot of hope in him, but I feel disappointed by his actions lately. Also coming from Chris Lopez, he says, Paul, who approved the funds for special prosecutor for the purchase of the said vehicles? Also coming from Master Planner Gina, he says, Mr. Paul, God bless you for speaking to the truth keep up the good work boys we are all proud of you coming from eb Ofe, he says that osp is an example of why caution is needed in appointing the so-called youth to sensitive positions coming from mohammed yusifa he says osp spent almost got 30 million Ghana cities of poor taxpayers' money on only cars, yet the office is unable to prosecute <coughs> even a cockroach. Also, Yao Marvin says, great job, Paul. Indeed, your educative program is very massive and very informative. May God bless you for the good work you are doing for Ghana. And then al Haji Yusuf also says, Paul, the OSP demands such questions from the people in the name of transparency and accountability. It cannot be the case that you are we are exposing the OSP, how special he is. The name special is misleading the OSP to think he's above other state anti-corruption agencies. How useful has the RTI been to journalists in Ghana? I can't believe people don't see anything wrong with the kind of vehicles he's buying in the name of security. And then lastly, coming from Nana Atopama, he says, the OSP is ordering those bulletproof cars for his friends. Antoinette, what do you have first? Okay, so driving into the Anasa's story, al Haji Yusuf says, Paul, on a more serious note, how is Anasa's account audited? Who does he account to? It shouldn't take German students to probe into Anasa's work. Our journalists have become so timid or befriended Anas such that they can't even ask him useful questions. Anas must come clean in his next episode because we will be here to ask him all the questions should he get it wrong this time. Ashita Simon says, um, greetings Paul, people like me would have ended up bad if not for a mere pardon. Free SHS, no matter how challenging, is the best policy ever. Now Nana um, Hesse says, Anas Arimeya, Anas's media house is called um, Kukum CNN. Kobe Yemwa says free SHS is the only government policy which has benefited every Ghanaian family since independence. I stand to be corrected though. Imoro Rashid says, Dear Paul, aside of free SHS that Nana Dubalmia's government has brought on board, he has augmented that with STEM, which is an inspirational story, and he is a visionary leader. We pray that DNB breaks the eight to continue with his good work. 
Now, here is a long read from Samuel of Fusuba. He says, Good evening, Paul, and your lovely disciples. One legacy that His Excellency Nanadu Dankwa Kufadu shall be remembered for is the eminent and unpredictable senior high school policy that has come to stay in the Ghanaian educational jurisdiction. <laughs> the educational culture in Ghana has been revolutionary transformed transformed to enlighten the average Ghanaian child to reach an epoch in the civilized world. Congratulations to the First Lady, Mrs. Rebecca Akufado, for her academic achievement. Bravo. Now, lastly, from our friend Derek Ofei Jr., he says, um, amidst the incredible incredulity of critics, he audaciously and successfully rolled out his flagship free SHS program, which according to the statistics will see over 1.8 million kids having access to education free of charge by the end of his mandate as president. By my estimation, in reference to the 21st century, he stands alone as the most significant figure in Ghanaian politics bar none. He is a story of intestinal fortitude a pedantic but sedulous rise to ultimate, ultimate power. A portion of my piece on the great politician, Nanadu Dankwa Kufado. Thank you, Derek. Over to you. All right, so here's a perspective from this, um, this uh, sorry, Dixon concerning the free SHS. And then he's saying that, great guy, keep the good words going. You educate millions across the world. Kudos, Paul. And this is from Kwejo Damwa. He says, Free SHS is one of the best programs in the Ghanaian history. May God bless Nana Dudankwa Eko Fuadu. All right. Um, moving on to this, LPM, the Makers Electronics Company Limited, is the Makers Electronics Blessing Attack Promo. Rush to the Makers Electronics Companies Limited for 67% discounts on selected appliances such as Samsung, LG, Moved, Nasco, TCL, Media, and Toshiba. Quality but affordable with two years manufacturing defect warranty. Visit our showrooms, Taifa Burkina, Amasamanzongo Junction, Oyarifa Teman, Kaswa New Markets, Ashaiman Valko Flats, Kumase Ahenema Kokobing, Takarade Efiekuma, number nine market. Call us on 055-222-2253 or 055-222-2254. The Makers Electronics Company Limited, large and in charge with quality but affordable home appliances and consumer electronics. Terms and conditions do apply. Now from Kingdom Home Real Estate, Kingdom Home Real Estate provides quality but affordable housing facilities for sale. Our facilities are located at the serene environment of a crop micropole and a brew with the best weather condition. We are 30 minutes dry from Accra and provide modern touch of comfort. We provide a high standard security service plus CCTV, standby generators, constant water supply and electricity. We are surrounded with lovely tourist sites such as Ebri Botanical Garden, Boti Falls, Safari Valley, Valley Resort, etc. Pay 70% upfront and spread the rest, which is the 30%, within two years with no interest. Locate us at Ebri, close to Ebri Girls Senior High School and a Cropon right after Latte Junction. Call us on 0559 761 144 or 0555 621 611. Visit us at www.kingdomhomerealestate.com and on our Facebook page. All right, so we have Nadum Autofix, and Nadum Autofix is the biggest car service center here in Ghana. We offer a wide range of auto services in real time. We have well trained staff in various departments such as auto mechanic, auto electrician, straighteners, welders, sprayers, and bodyworks. At Nadum Autofix, we offer 24 7 towing services to all our clients, and so we can conveniently bring your immovable car to our service center. Our Services include car diagnostics, mechanical works, auto servicing and oil change, alignment and balancing, body works and spraying, 
car detailing that is polishing interior and exterior of your car to look brand new steam engine wash that is washing your car engine without using water and seal of car battery we also have in stock car ties of all rim sizes at a whole and retail price we free fixing when you buy from us we are the biggest distributors of used and brand new tires in ghana and you can use metro tv as a reference for a special discount we are located at danso mana sorry down direct opposite to Danceman KFC and the Shell Fuel Station. And then you can call us on 055 830 8340. Angelo. Right, our friend uh, Kwame K from Ashomi Estate says It's true the government free SHS is working, but please, some headmasters are making it very difficult for parents. The one I can speak, of, I can speak to is, and he names a certain school I will not mention. Uh, a parent was told that the government's prospectus doesn't work there. And those who sent the harmonized prospectus were victimized and mocked by some of the teachers. The school sold the school uniform at 100 Ghana cities. Check 100 cities. You pay for entrance fee 50 cities. If you are a girl and you go there with East West, the teachers tell you that they don't want that in the school. So you are asked to buy different sandals. A parent asked for receipts and she was told they don't give receipts there. Okay. Uh, Adam Kojo says, I think we need to address the fundamental problem in this country when it comes to the government's budget. Last week, I refused to comment about the OSP budget because I believe the approach of, of approving our annual budget hasn't done us and our country any good. It is even surprising to hear that today, 12 December 2023, our parliament has again approved the OSP budget of 149 million cities for 2024. Please, the problem is not the OSP. We must adopt a reasonable way to approve the budgets of all government agencies and institutions. And Paul, I think you should check that of the EC from Adam Kojo. Now, briefly from our friends at Black Star Press, they say inside Black Star Press Limited, they grow businesses inside the inventive minds, evolving concepts and the creative trends. Uh, Black Star Press Limited is the printed press you need now, right now, right now, right now. When it's the beauty, diversity, and the natural wonder with our works. Inside Black Star Press Limited, in association with the Lionhead Group of Companies, call us now, write this down, on 0200-880000 for all your print works. Again, 0200-880000. Black Star Press Limited, a worldwide reputation for quality printing and back to you, Paul. Okay, thank you very much. It's still on Good Evening Ghana. And we're going into this fantastic interview that you have to see. Uh, we're going to talk about economics, growth, uh, inflation, and all of that. We don't often do these interviews, uh, but tonight you're going to do one. And you have to pay attention, viewers, if you can, because it's going to be very, very interesting. After the break, back on Good Evening Ghana. And uh, if you want to call me, you can call me on this break time. Uh, I'll be around and we'll be putting ourselves together. But I can still uh, talk on the phone uh, once or twice. I hope uh, Ken Alamengo and his family are watching. Good evening to you, sir. I salute you right from the studio. I'll be back after the break to do the interview. Anti cavity, dumb protection, brighter teeth, and fresh bread. I'm a fair missy way. Prepatio Bantama. Matias. Sanso Sanko. It's her smile. Your fresh breath. Me, Jidi said we used to kill 360 toothpaste. Some kind. Kill 360 toothpaste. That's Kia. Kill 360 toothpaste. It's a gum protector. Oh, Nim Jum Kazan Kazan Kazan. Kill 360 dead the way. It's cool, man. Gives me fresh breath and your confidence booster. <laughs> and you so so feeling to get when you need a year. Cal 360 toothpaste. Happy smile. Cal 360 toothpaste. Anti cavity, gum protection, brighter teeth, and fresh breath. Kel, happy smile. This apple is FDA approved. We are back, bringing you the latest lineup. From Betway. Yeah, um, yeah. Betway starts strong with your front two with free play Friday and swipe bet. I'm a foot now. In the middle, you've got all the control with cash out and build a bet. Plus, with win boost, you can boost your sports bet. At the back, they have smart picks and the partial daily jackpot. You always get way more with Betway. And you might see. 
perfected and approved. Discover the perfect blend of quality, modern elegance, and affordability with Kingdom Home Real Estate. At Kingdom Home Real Estate, we cater to both local and international clients, offering exceptional housing options in Ibri and Ikropong. Our properties are conveniently located, providing a tranquil atmosphere, top-notch security, and essential amenities such as electricity, water, and backup generators. Our strategic locations offer easy access to popular tourist destinations, all within a 30-minute drive from Accra. Visit us in Ekropon right after the latter junction or in Ibri near the Ibri Girls Senior High School. Alternatively, you can reach us. Kingdom Home Real Estate, where your dream home becomes a reality. car center in Ghana offering unparalleled round-the-clock service in autos and accessories Nadam Autofix is the biggest distributors of used ties in Ghana offering first grade second-hand car ties of all rim sizes at both wholesale and retail prices we are also the leading name in car sensor diagnostics, corrections and sales of car accessories. We excel in car washing and detailing with state-of-the-art steam engine washing machines that keep water away from your engine, ensuring a clean, healthy and responsive engine. Madam Autofix, the first name in servicing, car accessories and car washing. Visit us today and experience the world of class difference. Find us today at Asori Daho, directly opposite Dansoman KFC and the Shell Filling Station. For more details, you can call us on 0503-244-266 or 0535-339823. Now the motor fix. Enjoy the fruits of your labor, they say. But as humans, aging and physical infirmity stands our way of enjoying our mansions and homes. It often becomes challenging, if not impossible, to use our stairways day in, day out. With portable American pneumatic vacuum elevators, PVEs, you are assured of unlimited enjoyment of your mansions and homes. It's a self-supported elevator for vertical movement of humans and goods at homes and offices. The original comes in three custom-made models with wheelchair accessibility call it luxury but it's a necessary imperative for vertical mobility do not let aging or infirmity limit you get one for your easy vertical mobility at home it's affordable and can be installed in just three days without modification to your existing building it's however easier to incorporate it at the construction stage we also have traditional fuji elevators and escalators for your high-rise buildings and malls visit lifts and elevators company limited at sakumono for your elevators nationwide for free consultation to call or whatsapp us on 0200-535-515 lifts and elevators the elevator people station Wow. For when near was 0501 and now 553 Dr. Agawal's Eye Hospital for eyes like new.
For over 20 years of serving the world with herbal and alternative medicine, we've been successful in treating complicated medical conditions with a perfect combination of herbal and alternative methods of treatment, like homeopathy, naturopathy, reflexology, and many more. We deliver excellent and effective service to people from all walks of life through scientific and traditional means. We have a well-equipped laboratory with advanced diagnostic and treatment devices to help detect your illness so we know the right medication to be given at Amen Scientific Herbal and Alternative Medical Hospital. We are proud manufacturers of our own herbal medication. Our zeal and passion to save lives with our patients at heart and outstanding achievements since 1996 has won us several awards. That is why we say, Go Herbal, Go Amen. We are located everywhere in all the regions. Amen Scientific Herbal and Alternative Medical Hospital. Allahu Shafi. God is the healer. Customer, customer. Ah, Tangana 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 one of our daily lucky winners Dial star 946 has to play now Or you can also play online at www.gameparkgames.com Game Park is regulated by the National Lottery Authority ready <laughs> For when the year was zero five zero one five three four four nine eight and a zero five five three zero one nine three one one. Doctor Agawal's Eye Hospital for eyes like new. When I become rich, I'll have that car. Eh? Can, you, can you show the car again somehow? I, I love it, man. I love it. Yeah. At least I can put that together for us. But he's, he's, he's teasing me so that I'll increase my prayers. You know? I'll pray hard. I'll speak in tongues, you know. Uh, I'll, I'll ignore Abel Damina, then I'll pay my tithes so that the Lord will open the windows of heaven and pour out blessing unto me so that I'll not have enough place to keep. One day I was having a chat with a Christian, a Christian man, businessman, and people said that he's a greedy man. So I asked him that, uh, people say you are greedy. He said, what? what? Greedy? He said, yeah, people say you are greedy. He laughed at me. I said, oh, Paul, I don't want you. And I said, oh, sorry. I said, yes. Sorry. He said, so what kind of Bible? I said, yes. He said, I'm going to he will bless you and you will not have enough place to keep. No, it's just saying, and you're greedy. No? Now, who cars you don't have enough place to keep? I say, we're greedy. Who dying, you don't have enough place to write it down. We're greedy. Just say, what are they? You don't have enough place to keep. We're greedy. But that is the blessing of the Lord. The Lord said, He will bless you so that you won't have enough place to keep the blessing. And he said, BMW, open BMW and open Mercedes. I laughed at him. I said, neither. He said, okay, open BMW. 
Obenya BMW B50, 50 would be saying, you don't have enough place to keep. You have walked into the blessing of God. You have come to the blessing of God, and the blessing of God has met with you. It's a Kairos moment where humanity has met divinity for prosperity. Hallelujah. I can do well in the preaching, though, just that my time hasn't come yet. But I can do well in the preaching part to speak the word of Elohim. You see, so that things will happen. It is going to come. I'm going to, there's a time when I'm going to be preaching the word of God, powerful, powerful like that. And you said, is that not the guy who was on TV? The acts of Jesus Christ. Is that not the carpenter's son? Hey, these are the things that are about to happen. John said, for we speak of the things that are about to happen. <laughs> Hallelujah be to the resurrected Lord. After we have dealt with Ghana, after we have dealt with Ghana, we shall deal with the kingdom. Let me say it again. After we have dealt with Ghana, 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 the nation Ghana, after we have dealt with Ghana, the Lord will anoint us to deal with the kingdom. Amen. Okay, Doc, good evening. Forget about my Boko <laughs> preaching. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Why, why did so many people say I should interview you? And w- w- how was the UTV experience? Uh, let me thank you very much. Uh, mm-hmm. I think I am... Um, Sharing your program for the second time. Uh, yes. Yeah, when you were at uh, your old Laboni. place, I came. I once came on the program with uh, uh, Victoria Hammer. Yeah. She is one of those who said I should interview. Yeah, gender activism. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm at the Center for Social Policy Studies I'm at the University of Ghana, so we do a lot of work on gender. Uh, inequality, poverty, and those issues. You see, social a place protection. like social policy studies, shouldn't some of your thesis be finding its way to cabinet? That's what they do in America, you know. Exactly, because we look beyond the figures. So when somebody tells you the economy is growing um, at 6.2, and so what? If the uh, agricultural sector, I must say, at the first half of the year is growing at 6.2, who at where is benefiting? It's very, very I mean, important. We get to know uh, the drivers for the growth and who are actually benefiting. And so we look at those, uh, we call them poor, poor, you know. So we don't just accept what we are told. We go beyond the figures uh, to... Okay, so that's what you'll be doing for us students. You'll be explaining to us beyond that. Because you see, in Ghana, uh, governments always tell their figures. And then we always tell them that we don't feel it in our pockets. So it's, it's an important connection that we need to understand. How to migrate from the figures to arrive at the reality or how to use the reality to explain the figures. Yeah. We're, going to, we're going to do a lot of that tonight. Let's start, though, with inflation. Yeah. Uh, inflation, according to the government and the statistics, was doing okay. And then at COVID, it jumped. When we're in school and we're studying A-level economics, we were taught that inflation has something to do with the basket of goods. And so we were told that we should, we should think of a basket of goods. So the basket was drawn on the blackboard. And then they draw orange in the basket, egg in the basket, tomato. Then the teacher says, what else? Then we say, onion. Then he puts it there. What else? Then somebody say, car. I say, gout. What else? Then we put it there. So when you face it, you see, so that when I was asking you what else, you were telling me the things that you buy every day. Yeah. That's in the basket of goods. If the price of those things are going up beyond your preparation, that is to say, you bought it for two seasons, you are not coming back tomorrow to think it's four cities. You are coming back tomorrow to assume that it may go up by the 2.2. Yeah. But you come tomorrow and they say six cities. Now, if this changes to six cities, this six, this city, then the basket of goods has migrated from a total of 28 cities and in one month it's now 180 cities. That's huge inflation. Yeah. Is that correct analysis of what inflation is first before we go to the Ghana figures? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, very close, a very good example of what an inflation should be. Um, yes, that is how it is. Uh, but in Ghana, uh, before you get what we look at as headline um, inflation or call um, inflation, before you get any figure, we do what we call consumer price index. Mm-hmm. So that's maybe what your uh, mm-hmm. lecturer was trying to. Uh, yeah. So we have a certain number of goods in the basket, I think over 270 something. Mm-hmm. It, it could have been revised. But, uh, so all these uh, are in the basket. So what goods are in the basket? Um, the goods in the basket, sometimes um, it could be um, a family name. For example, if you say building materials, then anything building goes into that. Does building materials qualify to be in that basket? Yeah, it does. It's not just food. Yeah. Okay, so there's food inflation. That's separate. Yeah. 
Okay, but when at the basket of goods. Okay, so uh, I'm so when, now. when when we are doing the um, inflation, so all the goods in the basket mm -hmm. that are, that are the last. Are there I some checked, goods that should not be in the basket, or everything practically? Everything is in the basket? that is that we buy. School fees is in the basket. Uh, uh, no, uh, it wouldn't come as school fees. Sometimes, I mean, they, that's why I said that. Are they, services in the basket? Service, so we have educational. Yeah, so those things would come. Okay. Maybe one of these days we'll take time to mention. Mention them. So you can yeah, have a category, them. a family of educational stuff. E exactly. So sometimes that's how it comes. Is hotel room price in the basket? E yeah, it will be found there, but not as in that name. And so maybe one of these days we will do well to. Okay, be, so basically everything is in the basket. Everything that we buy and we sell in this for country. A country that, for a country that, for instance, mm -hmm. allows prostitution. Is the service <laughs> price for prostitution in the basket? No, that one, if it is an illegal... No, no, that's what I'm saying. For a country that allows it, like Amsterdam... Yeah, yeah, like, um, it will be there. Yeah, so sorry, for a city like Amsterdam that sorry, allows it... it will be there. Um, uh, uh, yeah, but, it will it be there? Yeah, it will be there. But for us in Ghana... Okay, so that's the, the service charge for something like undertakers in Ghana. You yeah, it, find its it way will into the basket. Yeah, it will definitely... You may not see the name, but... I call it funeral cost, it cost be, of funeral. It, it, yeah, it will be seen somewhere. So this is what they do. Um, every year, or periodically, uh, I mean, Ghana's Aska Service, they have a certain number of markets in Ghana. Mm -hmm. They visit these markets, and they look at the level of patronage of uh, the items in the basket. Mm -hmm. And so uh, they look at the patronage, and they give it a weight. And so when they are calculating the consumer price in this, it is the change in price for this particular commodity. For example, if last month this was 100 cities, Mm -hmm. And today, I mean, this month, it is 200. The change in price is what, 100? 100, yeah. And so we multiply the change in price for this commodity mm -hmm. or the item by its level of patronage. And the patronage, uh, the way thing is, uh, is 100. If you want to use 100%, um, you can use it. Or you, sometimes you can use one. If you use one, then you are looking at zero to one. Mm -hmm. And so if, uh, for example, uh, Ghanaians buy more of rice, we all know this is almost every household uh, would eat rice at least during the week. And so the, the, the level of patronage for rice is very high. Definitely, rice will have a higher weight. Mm -hmm. And so um, they look at the change in maybe a bag of rice, if the unit of mm -hmm. um, uh, what they are using is a, uh, the unit is bag. Then the bag of rice, if the price of the bag of rice is uh, 20 cities, and last month and this month it is 30 cities, the change in price is what? 10, 10 cities, yeah. Then they multiply that by the weight that has already been calculated. And they, so the more popular, the higher the weight. They, exactly. Okay. The more, so that, so that when, will make the inflation, the, yeah, so the, the consumer price go up. Exactly. So that when there's a little change in price for that commodity, it will affect the entire uh, CPI, consumer price. That's because a lot of people will be affected. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So sometimes uh, cars and other things that we don't buy frequently, you see that. Uh, the, the weight is very small. Mm -hmm. Even when the price change is huge, it doesn't affect the mm -hmm. entire weight. You know? And so when they multiply the change in price by uh, the weight, then they add uh, uh, another one, they add another one, until all, if we have 300 commodities in the basket, until we get all that. And when you get the total summation of change in price for every commodity times its weight, we get the linear summation of it gives what we call consumer price index. Mm -hmm. And so every month, Ghana Saskia Service calculates what we call consumer price index for the month. Mm -hmm. And so consumer price index for March and the consumer price for April, if we are calculating inflation in April, it is a proportionate change in consumer price index. Oh, I get it. Fantastic. You're a great that's, teacher, that's, though. That's what, that's what gives us inflation. But, but, but we have okay. two types. So you have consumer, the changes in consumer price index month on month. Is that, yeah, that's, that's what gives what, us inflation. That's what gives us inflation. But uh, I'm just using it, uh, if I will do it year on year, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. what they do. Mm -hmm. Year on year is to suggest that if May, uh, last year May, if we calculate consumer price index for this year's May, we are looking at the change Proportionally change from last year May to this year's May exactly. Well, that the announcement they make. Yeah. So the announcement no, no, they make that, is a year that on year. Become, exactly. That okay. become year. In fact, some of these things are very technical, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. sometimes <laughs> uh, people come out uh, to explain them anyhow they understand it. Mm -hmm. You know. But we have two. We have two of them. 
before we move to Ghana figures, we have two of them that we have to be very careful we don't combine it. Because if you go to the website of I mean, Bank of Ghana, we have, we have uh, what we call call um, inflation, and we have headline um, inflation. Mm -hmm. The headline one is normally what we talk about because that one, everything is inclusive. Okay. But the core one, normally they will look at things that are very volatile. Some of the prices are very volatile. They get changed. They keep on changing all the time. Mm. And so sometimes you want to take those things away. Like mobile phones? Uh, no, normally we talk about food and energy. The prices uh, yeah, of, price of food and energy. They keep on yeah, who, changing who, who, all the okay, time. Okay, which is susceptible to a lot of changes. Yeah, seasonal. For example, Ghana, when, it, when uh, around this time, you go to market and plantain is cheaper mm -hmm. than it, it was maybe June, May. Mm -hmm. Because it is seasonal, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The, uh, the volatility is very high. Yeah. And therefore, uh, anytime you want to uh, look at what really is happening to price changes, you want to put uh, food somewhere, you want to put I mean, energy somewhere. If you did that, what you get is core, core inflation. But so, then, mm -hmm. if you include the, the headline, all those that are volatile, mm -hmm. then you will get the headline. And so, what we normally, what Ghana's Asuka Service normally comes out to announce is the headline inflation. Okay, so that's the end of the uh, explanation to inflation. Uh, uh, Madam Nola, that's for you. That's the end of the explanation to inflation. Okay. And, and, uh, and, and there's another misconception. Mm -hmm. uh, during President Kufuor's time, I remember when he came, um, inflation was 40.5% yes. in the year 2000. Are we not getting to the Ghana figures? Yeah. yeah. It was 40.5%. And then, uh, before we could say, Jack, uh, it came down, it dropped to around 10%. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, you know, 2007 and 2018 were very hard. Mm -hmm. You know, 2007, of course, was very... Hot, I mean, I think one of the hottest years recorded in history, and uh, the whole world ag agricultural productivity was affected. And so mm -hmm. there was a food crisis, if you remember, and that affected uh, I mean, inflation globally everywhere, and it affected Ghana as well. So before ended Ghana, he picked it from 40.5, he ended with uh, 16 point something, you know. And I remember uh, at that time. Uh, this was what uh, one senior journalist couched when he heard that President Kufu has been able to reduce inflation from 40 all the way to 16, and MP people were talking about it. He said, Mozo Gomi, he was on the program. Mozo Gomi, Omuzi President Kufu to um, inflation 40.5, and today it has gone down to 16.5. Uh, then so what? If uh, inflation has gone down, when we go to the market, we still see prices of goods going up. You see, we always make mistake with that. When we hear inflation has dropped, it doesn't mean that prices of goods and services, general level of prices of goods and services, have gone down. No. And by the way, he's my in-law. It rather means no, that... He's, he's my in-law. <laughs> and, 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 and he watches this program okay. a lot. Yeah, so, so maybe you will remember. So uh, when it does that, it doesn't mean that prices of goods and services have gone down. What it means is that the rate at which the, the price oh, was increasing has slowed down. Has slowed down. For example, you are speeding. You are going 120. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, you see something on your way. And you begin to slow. The car doesn't go back. Mm -hmm. It still moves forward. Except that the rate at which it goes slows. So that's what happens. So when you hear inflation had dropped, it was 54.1% at the end of last year. And at the end of... Uh, October, it has dropped to 35.2 percent. It does not mean that prices are going down, but the rate at which prices were going up is what has what been so, slowed. That's what it means. So that's that's general inflation. Exactly. Okay, let's pick 2016 and walk us up to 2020. Yeah. So picking it from President Kufo, as I said, that, that he left it around 16. Indeed, uh, uh, when President Mills. Uh, Mills came, almost 36 months we observe uh, single, single digit, digit inflation. inflation. That was fantastic. And that was uh, historic because uh, I think since the 1960s, we didn't see that happening. Mm -hmm. you know, but uh, sometime I, maybe one of these days will come and explain why. Because when President Kufo came, he introduced what we call uh, inflation targeting. We were doing monetary targeting. We moved to inflation targeting. Part of the reason why inflation started going down from March, uh, since March 2003. And so had it not been for what happened 
in 2007, 2008, mm -hmm. you know, 2007, 2008, uh, there were three key things that affected prices of goods and services in Ghana. One happened to be uh, U.S. and, you know, U.S. Uh, invaded, I mean, you know, Iraq. Mm -hmm. We all saw what happened. So prices of uh, fuel went up. Indeed, um, the, uh, we were buying on the global market a barrel of crude oil went as far as $147. That still remains the highest. Mm -hmm. So at that time, prices of good, uh, you know, uh, fuel prices went up. It affected um, transportation as usual. What again, American subprime mortgaging that affected the global market also as uh, 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 we were part of the global system. So we also, it also affected us. And there was also global food prices. And so uh, these two years, we didn't do well with um, inflation. I'm talking about 2007. Yes, otherwise, we could have achieved single digits we by 2008. No, indeed, during President Kufuor time, some of the months, we had single digit. And so it's, it stagnated. Inflation stagnated around 10%. So we were on course of uh, staying below 10% for very long. But because of these three, two, uh, three things that I have talked about, 2007, 2008, we didn't do well. But 2009... We dropped again, but we even went up only to 16. We dropped again, and since we dropped, we had single gate until um, President Mahama came to take over from President. Uh, so the four years of Professor Mills was single digit. It was. Uh, the, oh, that's that three, yeah, three years. In three fact, years of it. The last that, three years. Indeed, when uh, President Mahama became president in July 2012. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, inflation was 8.6 percent. Wow. So, so 2011. And I'm using Bank of Ghana data. Indeed, if you Google Ghana, um, trend of Ghana's um, inflation, you get some figures okay. that, are, that have been developed. I don't know. And, 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 and that's what people always make references to. Please, let's go to Bank of Ghana's website, get their data. That is what is authentic. Because IMF and all the others, they go to, they come here for figures. Mm -hmm. They don't generate figures. Mm -hmm. So why do you then have to go and quote what? Th there's. You know, mm -hmm. so uh, let's use, I mean, so, uh, so th these figures that I'm giving you are coming directly from BOG. Mm -hmm. uh, so the year 2011, I mean, Ghana ended with 8.6. It was single mm -hmm. digit. Mm -hmm. 2012, when President Mah Mahama took over, inflation went up to 8.8. .8. Mm -hmm. So it means that uh, the, the last five months of the year, uh, the year ended with inflation going up from 8.6 to 8.8. Mm -hmm. 2013, inflation went up again under President Mahama to 13.5. Mm -hmm. Then 2014, it went up again to 17.0. 2015, 17.7. So almost, uh, the, uh, almost every year that President Mahama ruled, especially the first four years, inflation went up every year. But the fifth year, because I'm adding the last year, 2012 to his years, to make it five years. So the fifth year, inflation dropped marginally from 17.7%. It was in, at the end of 2015 to 15.4%. Mm -hmm. So it was this that Nana Ekufaudu came to inherit, 15.4%. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And uh, when I hear people uh, describe Nana Ekufaudu as incompetent because of uh, inflation, I cry. Because uh, that's not the truth. Because indeed, if you really want to do serious and objective analysis and you want to compare the Kufaldo's records. It's one of the best. From mm. 1957, you go through the list. It's one of the best. All the figures are there. On inflation. On inflation. Let's, no, let's, no, nobody's going to believe that. Yeah, I, and I'm sure they have started insulting me anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I but said you are sure about that. Yeah. From, from yeah. the 60s up to now, yeah. it, it's, it's first records, four years of inflation. It's records, in fact, it's about one of the best. I, I talked about President uh, Mills' 36, 36 months, yeah. Yeah, that was huge. Mm -hmm. You know, that was excellent. Yeah. But, uh, we, but that's what Dr. Dufo is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was we, a finance minister. We also got almost the same thing, uh, I mean, between 2017 Tell us, show us the figures. Yeah, so this is what happened. When the uh, Nanado government picked it at 15.4, mm -hmm. the following year, it dropped significantly to 11.4. Which the following year was 18 or 17? 2017. Uh -huh. Because it started raining anyway. Okay. He, he came as soon as he came, it started raining very well. So mm -hmm. agriculture sector that wasn't doing well at all. Picked up. Picked up because agriculture sector 
uh, I mean, helps with the food. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. and so with the food inflation, yeah. 2014, agricultural sector grew 0.9%. Mm -hmm. 2015, it grew 2.3%. 2016, that it did very well. The sector grew 2.9%. Uh, mm -hmm. So agricultural sector's performance was so bad. And as soon as, as, soon as Nanado came, agricultural sector has always been growing uh, over 6%. It was only one year that uh, the growth rate was... He will say it's planting for food and jobs. I mean, we will come there maybe today because we are not doing... Okay, sector. so let's... let, 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 me, let So let's go on. So, so for 2018, mm -hmm. we, we started the single degree thing and we ended the year 2018 with 9.4 inflation. Mm -hmm. Then 2019, we registered 7.9. And this oh, a, I see. Yeah, this 7.9 happened to be the lowest since March 1992. For 28 years. It was the lowest in 28 years. Wait, wait, wait. And, and, so the 2019 7.9 was lower than any of the figures of the Professor Mills 36 months. Exactly. exactly. And was the lowest since 92? Since 19, March 1992. That's where inflation was 7.6. And so that, uh, we had the lowest. Mm -hmm. uh, and we recorded 2019, 7.9. Yeah, end of, the lowest end of year inflation. Mm -hmm. End of year. So I'm picking December, December. All these figures that I'm giving, they are December. end of year. Okay. December figures, please. And so 7.9, 28 years, lowest. Indeed, if you even go on, the, I, I've seen uh, this uh, trend of um, inflation that you see, uh, it is, uh, you see, I mean, IMF, I'm not too sure whether it is coming from, you know, I mean, IMF, but if you pick it, you even see the 7.9 that I'm talking about is 7.14. And that one would have even be the lowest since uh, somewhere in the 70s. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, but I don't want to use those figures. The I want to use 7 .9. Uh, And if I use that. So this is why we were Ghana, December 2019. Mm -hmm. Before the following year, uh, we, we, we were caught on our way. We didn't know. Nobody ever planned that there was something, COVID or anything was coming. It came from nowhere. But even when COVID came uh, and countries were suffering, were registering higher um, inflationary rates, Ghana, 2020, we ended the year with 10.4%. Mm, the COVID year? The COVID year. And then 2021, we ended the year with 126 mm -hmm. And so, uh, the reason why I'm saying Nanado did very well is that at the time President uh, Mahama was exiting, December 2016, inflation was 15.4. Mm -hmm. And for almost six years, Inflation of Nanado was always lower than what he came to meet. So until 2020. Until 2020. In fact, inflation was always lower than 15.4 until February 2022, when we registered 15. Point, I mean, 15.7. Uh, oh, I see. 2022, so, last year. La only last year. So it was only last year, the second month of last year, before that we, we saw went. Nanado's inflation becoming higher for the first time. Than what he came to, um, to, inherit. to inherit in 2016. Exactly. Because he came to inherit 15.4. And not even any month from uh, December 2016 all the way to February 2022 did we register any inflation lower than 15.4. So the only month or the first month that Nanado's inflation became higher than uh, President Mahama was in February 2022 when we registered. 15.7. Uh, and then it started going up. When this 15.7 came, you know, multiple of factors, but people don't want to hear. Whether you want to hear or you don't want to hear, these are the facts. Indeed, I was, uh, I'm a participant to the recent held, uh, I mean, recently held I mean, IMF World Bank, you know, annual meeting. And 191 countries came there. Mm -hmm. None of the countries that came there, <laughs> uh, you know, were, I mean, were so happy with what was happening in, uh, you know, I mean, with the, the uh, economy. I mean, economy. You know, uh, the whole fact is that whether we like it or not, COVID indeed affected us. Uh, Russian and Ukrainian thing also affected us. People talk about that, oh, it's, it's, it's not true. It's not true. Okay. Yes. Let, let me if ask it is you. not true. Oh, you want to put out some yeah. questions? Yeah, I, want to, After that, I have a question yeah, for you. Yeah, if it is not true, we were in Ghana, right? And uh, we were, uh, before the, the, I mean, Russian and um, Ukrainian uh, war, or before Russia entered Ukraine, uh, a bar of crude oil in the global market was being sold for $72. Mm -hmm. uh, some point, I mean, during the middle of the, during the heat of the war, 
it went up to 121. Mm -hmm. You know, when it went up to one, so it meant that uh, 72 could have bought, um, you know, about, and now you needed to add how much dollars to buy one. Mm -hmm. I, I think that was a lot, yes. almost about $50. Yes, yes, yes. And Ghana, we consume about 130,000 barrels a day. So multiply that by this. This were some of the reasons why even dollar demand. One day when we, we will look at all this and exchange rate crisis that we experienced last year, mm -hmm. we, can, we will use all this to explain. So sometimes I ask, when people are saying that Nanado uh, recorded one of the highest I'm inflation, but when they do that, they are not telling the truth. Because I, I'm inflation 1983. Indeed, 1983 is the year that we recorded the highest inflation in our history. What figure was it? 122.8%. 93. Some, sorry, 1983. 83. 83. That's the highest. That yeah, that's, that's Joabe and Kusibo Exactly. And let me say that even in the 90s, we were sometimes going oh, to... Oh, but 70. 83 is the hunger. That's yeah. when we had the famine. That, that was it. That oh, was so about, the famine would have significantly occasioned this high level. That, that was it. Yeah. That was maybe one of these days if we have time to go back. Ah, yeah. Okay, okay. I, I was going to blame politicians, but the no, famine, no, I just was, remember that. It was, that it was significantly as a yeah, result. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, um, this is where we have been. And I'm saying that Ghana, anytime fuel prices go up, it affects almost everything. Mm -hmm. And so, when uh, uh, at the time we were selling about uh, crude oil for $72, uh, mm -hmm. a letter was going around saying it is 30 pesos. Before we could say, Jack, we were selling a letter, and unfortunately, CD was also depreciating at the very fast rate. And so before we could say that we were uh, buying a letter of uh, petrol over 17, uh, um, I mean, 17 cities. You know, diesel was about 23 cities. And that affected almost every day, for, uh, I mean, prices of uh, goods, uh, I mean, and services were going up because uh, uh, if somebody had gone to my hometown there, man, Mm -hmm. I, I come from the same hometown with PK Safran. Oh, I yeah, see. You always mention his name. Yes, 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 yeah. yes. So if I hap happen to go to them right now mm -hmm. and they give me uh, a cassava for free, before I, uh, I transport them to Accra here, it would have been so expensive if I am here to sell. Mm -hmm. And so that is one point. But we should also uh, know that around this time, we are also suffering from what we call global supply crisis during COVID, most of the big manufacturing uh, companies shut down they were not producing and so at a point 2021 2022 if you have walked to uh, supermarkets in the west in the developed world and you wanted to buy uh, a bottle of oil uh, you two bottles, buy, they restrict you, you to, yeah they restrict you to one rationing started and the prices went up in american markets yes 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 and the prices went up yeah they went and, up and so if you go there to buy would you come here and sell it at the cheaper prices? No. no. You know, for, so for those who are blaming that all that happened is because of the incompetence of this government, I'm asking them, uh, because, of the, because they are so competent, <laughs> were they going to uh, you know, go with uh, our exporters and importers? Were they going to go with them so that they will enter the shops and tell them that I'm the one ruling Ghana, I'm competent, so sell to them cheaply? And once they buy... At exorbitant prices, expect that when they come to Ghana, they have to sell uh, it at higher prices before they can break even. And this is why you can't blame what is happening, uh, what was actually happening in Ghana that quarter. At the same time that we were witnessing increases in um, inflation, June last year, 2022, U.S. recorded an inflation of 9.1. And that was the highest over 40 years. U.S. of A, the biggest economy in the world, with a GDP of over 23 trillion. Mm -hmm. They were also suffering. They recorded the highest inflation in over 40 years. You know, and so if you had gone to US to buy, would you come here and sell it because you are competent? Because your government is competent? You know, and so these are these are all these things that happen is because of the some structural difficulties that we have. Most of the things, if we are manufacturing them here, we could have managed, and so that's another story. Maybe one day we'll talk about them, what one day one day can do to address that particular you know, problem, our dependence on I mean mm -hmm. import. So with the, with, the, with the current structure of the economy and our over-dependence on import, at that time, nobody, I'm saying it here, nobody, I've always been throwing the challenge that I, I want scholars, we, we sit around a table like this and they tell me that uh, if we were around, we'd have done A, B, C, D to make sure that inflation didn't end at 50, 
4.1. That's where it ended in 2022. That's, 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 that's where we ended with it. And um, at the end of uh, uh, October, it has dropped to 35.2. Indeed, uh, we are hoping that by the end of um, uh, 2024, we will be having around 15%. And that is achievable. That's achievable. We may even get to that uh, earlier than yeah, that. Okay, so now let me bring you back and ask you a question that may not be formed part of you. We're looking at the Russia and Ukraine war, the, the ramifications of it on the economy and inflation, and then the COVID. My question to you is, which one was severe? Was it COVID or was it the Russia and Ukraine war? Yeah, so when it comes to um, inflation, I think uh, at the time Russian uh, Ukrainian war started, those were the time we have started feeling the, sh- the heat of uh, the global. Uh, supply crisis. And so without the Russian-Ukrainian war, we would have still experienced crisis. You know, not so unfortunately, most of so the So COVID that, was severe? Yes, it was to some extent. Severe than Russia and Ukraine I wouldn't war. say that. Because... Uh, it, should, it should stand to reason because COVID yeah, was the whole world. It shut was down. Russia and Ukraine war is a, is a production chain yeah. that is shut down that, mm. that produces to a certain category of people. Mm. We happen to be affected by those who receive because that's, we're in Africa and that's yeah, Europe. Yeah. But people who live in Asia, Thailand, who do not really take anything from Ukraine in terms of the grain and all of that, they, 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 will, they will continue with their yeah. recovery from COVID. So Taiwan, uh, Singapore, Thailand, uh, China itself, they, they don't... Yeah, yeah, I think China I, may be... China may mm. be affected by Russia and Ukraine yeah. because of their trade with Russia. Yeah. Yeah. But those other countries, will they be affected by Russia yeah, and Ukraine? Yeah, you see, the energy, cost of energy. Uh-huh. You know, uh, that, that crisis increased cost of energy, not mm-hmm. only in Europe, but mm. all over the world. Oh, yeah, so then and that's so it. so when it. the cost of energy goes up, globally, cost of, cost of production goes up. But how did the war increase cost of energy anyway? I want to understand that. Uh, Russia stopped its cuts, stopped yeah, the supplies. So, so, yeah, because uh, uh, before the war, Russia was supplying... Uh, one cheap ten, energy, as ten, it is. 10 million barrels of crude oil a day to the global market. 10 million? 10 million dollars, I mean, barrels. barrels of oil. Of crude oil. And Out uh, of Russia, yeah, to the global Russia, market. And that stopped? Yeah, uh, almost. Over 90% mm-hmm. supply. Stopped? Yeah. You know, because people were not even patronizing. People were not buying. People banned Russia for Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. You know, and so that affected the the... I mean, the global market. Yeah, it did, it did. Yeah. Uh, U- U.S. Uh, is the, big, uh, so, uh, I'm the biggest supplier. Mm-hmm. They were supplying at the time 12 uh, million barrels. Mm-hmm. You know, and Russia, 12? Yeah, 12 million barrels. And Russia was supplying 10 million, 10 million. barrels. You know, U.S. has capacity to even supply to, I mean, 20 million mm-hmm. you know, barrels a day. So we're looking forward for them to increase it, but they didn't. You know, they or didn't to increase just, to cover up the deficit that yeah, they didn't. created. And the open countries... We're also reluctant. Because you know, they were enjoying the price hike. Exactly. And so that push. That's the, the point you're up. making. You, that's your competition. The competition doesn't change anything. Exactly. If, if people want to enjoy the price hike, they will. Yeah. And so that definitely affected prices of uh, energy. And once, uh, even if uh, it didn't affect Ghana, Ghana, you go to Germany to buy all the tap. And uh, energy, cost of energy there went up over the skies. And so it affected cost of production there. And definitely, it affected prices of goods and services <coughs> over there. So if you go to Germany to buy, to come to Ghana, to sell, definitely you have to sell if beyond what uh, people would have expected to see it in the market. And that obviously uh, pushed prices up. And so when people say that uh, we shouldn't uh, blame Russia and Ukrainian war, I, I just don't know where they are coming from. In any case, and I have to be very careful with this, mm-hmm. you know that this question that you asked, uh, which of the who was major yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you would get to know it better if you have the data and you try to control for all other factors with the mm-hmm. exception of this you know so if you're able to uh, use a very good model to uh, extricate the counterfactuals you, you'll be able to establish what we call causality so that we really get to know the true impact of our uh, COVID and true impact of our uh, Russian Ukrainian war. Until then, we can only speculate and say that um, at the time of the war, uh, the global supply crisis was also, had also started, and it didn't help matters at all. Because, number one, you were not getting the goods. 
Number two, you could only get them at a very exorbitant prices. And so, uh, and when you brought them here as well, your CD was depreciating. At the same time, CD was depreci uh, depreciating. Uh, global market price for oil was also going up every day. And therefore, almost every time you have to buy fuel, it was also going up. So at the beginning of the year, when you were buying one liter for about six cities, around six cities, uh, around October, you were buying it 17 cities. And so prices, I mean, transport fares and all that went up. And it affected everything. Everything. Somebody has sent everything. me something. I know you, you like us to rely on Bank of Ghana, but here's something I have. It says top 10 uh, African countries with the lowest fuel cost. And Ghana is showing at number nine with a fuel cost of one dollar zero five six cents at number forty four. Libya is one, Algeria is two, Angola is three, Egypt is four, Nigeria, Tunisia, Gabon, Liberia sells fuel cheaper than Ghana. Is that a good story? Upon where is Liberia? Yeah. So is the is the way we calculate uh, ours. In, indeed, uh, uh, in our situation, there are three things that would affect the prices. The global market price, and then um, the taxes, and then also uh, the CD. So mm. these days we have we have seen a CD doing very well, stagnating around of uh, percent. Of, yeah, and yeah. For, yeah, and so we that seem is, to be running out of time. Let's do some text messages. Somebody says NDC recorded a single digit inflation just in one year, which is eight point seven three in twenty eleven. Please ask Prof. Why is the inflation figures of Bank of Ghana different from the IMF's own? We need to know, and something must be done about it. We need accuracy and consistency, Master Planner Jr. Why, why is it so? Yeah, I ask myself the same, and that's why I didn't want to respond, use the an IMF one. If I had used the an IMF one, it would have meant that for every year that President Mahama ruled this country, inflation went up. Yeah, but that's the, that's the report you gave us as well. Yeah, and if you do the DOG one, 2016, it, it, it went down slightly to 15.4 from 17.7 in 2015. Oh, I see. Yeah, so... The, but so, the IMF one, every year, it should go Yeah, up. yeah, that one, if you use it, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, help, uh, you know, matters for... Uh, Nino yeah. Enoti is a, uh, the NDC parliamentary candidate for Kole Klote constituency. Mm. Hopefully he will win. Mm. Uh, he says to me, he's the MPP candidate, that's the NDC. <laughs> he's the MPP candidate for Kole Klote constituency. <laughs> Hopefully Nino mm. will win. Uh, he says that... Senior Paul, Dr. Donfe has re really enlightened me on this inflation thing. Hey, so we have done so well as a government. We need effective communication and education on these matters. Dr. Dabamia will definitely break the eight. Yes, uh, I believe that uh, Nino, Nino Naughty. Another one says, Paul, even though we face a challenge with depreciation of CD, Ghana still has one of the cheapest uh, fuel prices in Africa and the cheapest in West Africa. No, from your figures, Liberia. Uh, seems to be cheaper than uh, West Africa. Uh, okay. Somebody says, ha, ha, ha. This professor cannot hide his intense love for MPP. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they said that uh, all professor the time. Professor that's coming, that's coming out uh, now. I understood that. Somebody sent me a text and says that, uh, hey, 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 you are cutting him off. The answers are not coming through. And I sent the person a text and said that, is it better now? And uh, he writes back and says, it's better. Uh, it's better. So I'm happy about that. <laughs> Okay. Yo, so my, my conclusion... Get your uh, text message that, ready, eh? Yeah. Doc, let's take the text message, then we'll come to the conclusion, so that maybe some of the text might be useful for you too. Okay, okay. Uh, okay. Yes. Uh, so, Fatih, are you ready to start for us? Thank you. This is coming from Elda, and he says, for automatically the negative compared with anything in the past hundred years. Also coming from Kuzema Osmani says, Paul, your guest is super good. His analysis and facts blowing data would attract a lot of enemies for him. I think he should stay low. Also coming from Julius Amaki says, Ghanaians hold President Nanadu a big gratitude, but not today, Ghanaians would realize. Also Edward Dugbaza here says, nobody says COVID-19 and Russian-Ukraine war didn't affect Ghana. Did this external problems cause the government to borrow as if as if there was no tomorrow flying around the world like an arabian king having 125 ministers and 
1,000 presidential staffers, mismanagement of the economy, making corruption the largest social intervention, etc. This is so shameful. And then lastly, coming from Samo Ofosubai, this is the first time I listened to Dr. Dumfe at the Movement Radio. I honestly removed my heart for him. He doesn't mix worse. The communication sectors of the NPP and government know these economical achievements. Why are they silent about these information? Doc, thanks for your boldness to declare these hidden truth. I know you'll be insulted, but never fear those deranged people who feel empowered in their previous propaganda. So, Kabina Intribo Siako has a summary of everything that has been said today. And he says, um, firstly, before the COVID-19 crisis, the economy was doing well under this government. The Russia-Ukrainian war further compounded the effect on the economy. The Ghanaian economy was hardest hit because of the structure of the economy being largely import-driven, and hence we imported the global inflation into our economy. And lastly, he said, for the last 11 months, since January this year, there is some economic recovery based on the data available given by the guests. So that is the summary from Kwame Ntribo Saku. Thank you. Shadrak says, I think 10 years from now, many will cry and call President Nana Dudanko Akufado, and they will bless him so well. It is rather unfortunate that COVID-19 indeed affected the economy. It's a shame. And lastly, Bright Eduasari says, but still, we are suffering economically, and people cannot even pay their rent. What do you have to say about that, Mami? All right, this one is coming from Dixon. He says, great step, Paul. He who seek equity must come with clean hands. And also from Eddie Mensa, he says, I knew it would be him, even though he didn't mention him. He's a great asset to the country. Good job. And lastly, coming from Shadrach, he says, Ghana is a great and beautiful country because we have people like you, Paul. Thank you. Okay, I have not Francis Siam, one of my favorite politicians. Uh, she says, hi, Paul. My regards to the esteemed economist and researcher, Dr. George Donfell of the Center for Policy Studies, University of Ghana. A Frances did policy, didn't she? Did she, did, she, did she graduate out of policy studies? Not at our place, yeah. Ah, I see. He says he's a juggernaut, always explicit and concise. Please ask him about disinflation. Whoa, Paul, she says, your program day form. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Frances. Long time. I shall come and uh, visit you. <laughs> okay. Uh, Yes. So, so do you want to talk about this inflation? Another person said we can't pay rent, which is kind of true. Yeah. And you are sitting on TV saying that Akufado <laughs> has done well with inflation. What do yeah. you say to that? Yeah. So whatever it is, so I mean, at any point, any day, any time, uh, we have people who struggle to pay rent. I also struggle as well. I, I always, this guy comes to my house when the month ends to see how I struggle to share my money. Because you must share anyway, and it's not that sufficient. So he's not the only one in Ghana. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, that's why we need to boost the local production. And maybe one more, uh, as we, we started the conversation, we'll go there. I, I yeah. think every, every month we'll bring Dr. Donfair, yeah. we'll call it an economics corner, and then we can all learn economics. Uh, <laughs> somebody said, we don't want to learn economics the MPP way. You should teach the proper economics. Yeah, so uh, that, the proper one that I'm teaching that person is that yeah. President Mahama is now making noise. I mean, sorry, sir. That, uh, I mean, uh, inflation is too high. And so the question I ask him and the people who support him is that uh, under his watch, inflation went up every year. Apart from when we use the BOG data. If you use the, I mean, uh, of an IMF data, uh, every year under his watch, inflation went up. The five, the five years that he ruled, if you use the um, IMF data. But if you use BOG data, and these are normal data, please go to a Bank of Ghana website. And these figures are there. 2011, inflation was 8.6. 2012, it went up to 8.8. 2013, 13.5. 2014, 17. 2015, 17.7. It's not going up, is it? I mean, this is clear. So, President Mahama doesn't have a right to say. No, no. So, that. and under Nanado, you know, under uh, during uh, the period that he ruled as the head of state, we didn't have any problem. We didn't have a global challenge, mm -hmm. and yet in inflation went up every year. About President Mahama. About him. Yeah. Then Akufuado comes. Three years that he ruled that the whole world, the global economy, was uh, okay. Was okay. Inflation went down every year. 
And so now that okay, so you say President Muhammad's three years. Uh, there was no is, global crisis. But inflation, inflation went, went up every year. Mm -hmm. Akufado too, no global crisis. Inflation went down every year. Every year. And so today that there is, I mean, crisis, that has pushed the biggest economy in the world with GDP of over 23 trillion, uh, registering an inflation of over 40%. Who do we call to help Ghana address an inflation? Is it the one who's uh, under his tenure, inflation was always going up when nothing had happened? Or the one who, who's, uh, who, under his tenure, inflation was going down when nothing has happened to the global markets. So you say President Mama doesn't have a right to say so sometimes that? Sometimes when I hear him, I wish he could tone down a bit. Uh, of course, he, uh, Ghanaians, I mean, he wants to be voted for, so I mean, he's a politician. But if I were him, I'll be, I'll be a little bit modest when I'm talking about this. Uh, 54, today prices have gone up. Because under your watch, it was going up every year. And you, you didn't do anything to stop it. You know, and we even come to uh, the agricultural sector, the policies. You know, uh, 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 I mean, you can't just sit here and wait that Ghana becomes like London and tomorrow um, it becomes like London. You need to put in place policy. You need to uh, put on paper what you want Ghana to be tomorrow. Based on what happened yesterday and based on what we are seeing today. So you can get to where you want to be tomorrow. But we, we hardly will hear policies. Today, I think we are hearing one at least a uh, 24-hour um, economy. And that's another story one day, one of these we may well, we should discuss. About. Let me take the, let me take the <laughs> last section. So, uh, Madam Noela, the, the part we just on John Muhammad part, all that, please note it down. Uh, Mikhail. All right, we've got a friend Jude from Domi say, in 2017, we were in an IMF program. Perhaps speaking to the inflation rate. Uh, Nia Shong says, my economics lecturer at UPSA, proud of you, Prof. Uh, Felix wants to know, he says, Doc, so please, why didn't Ghana benefit too since we have oil here? Or are oil ceased to be in production? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's another question. Going up, is it not good for Ghana? Yeah, it's good for us. Because, uh, unfortunately, we all know how much we get the oil. We are not getting so much. And so, uh, at least the letter that we get, 70% of it enters directly into our revenue basket as a annual budget funding amount, the mm -hmm. And so, 70%, and the other 30%, we will put part of it in the stabilization fund, and another one somewhere in the U.S., you know, investing for the future. So, it's you something. Know, yeah, yeah, but uh, it's not that much. Uh, and one thing... Is maybe, it a billion a year? Maybe. Could it be a billion dollars a year? Um, it, it fluctuates, so maybe I, I don't want to make a, a But in terms of a minimum, could it, could it be a billion? Or it's maximum, could it be a billion? Yeah, it can. It can but a billion dollars a year is not a small money. Yeah, it's not small money, but if you look at, uh, uh, you know, unfortunately, the, the, uh, the sector has mm -hmm. been deregulated, which mm -hmm. means that government is no more there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's, it's uh, And so uh, uh, BDCs go out there to buy the refined mm -hmm. food oil, you know. And uh, unfortunately for us, uh, we, we at a very good day, Ghana can produce 173,000 barrels of crude oil. Mm -hmm. At a very good day. And, That's uh, the maximum now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our maximum can even go over 200. I think uh, the data puts it around 213 or something, mm -hmm. something thousand. But uh, normally and uh, mostly, they, they hover around 173,000 barrels a day. Now, ask yourself, do we refund them here? We don't. So people would have to go to Holland and the other places, um, the BDCs, to buy. So when they go and the prices have gone up, they will come here and sell in order to stay afloat in business or make profit. At first, maybe they will be profit minded. They want to make profit. And so don't tell me that it doesn't matter uh, who government is in power and the, the, uh, there is a global shock. The person can go and then, uh, yeah, because I'm, I'm competent. Uh, when the when it is 72 and it has shot up to 121, go, go to the market. I'm going to speak to the people to sell it to you at 72. Is, is that possible? And if you cannot sell it, I mean, command them to sell it to the BDCs at $72 that it used to be before the Russian and Ukrainian crisis, you better shut up. It means that you couldn't have I mean, addressed this problem. Or maybe another thing is that government is going back again into where we were before we, we, we deregulated the sector. If that is so, then why do you have the money? Do you have the money to buy for, for I, mean, if, I mean, for consumers? You don't have it. You know? And so if you go around complaining, then 
we don't want to tell the truth. And when you tell the truth, people associate you with, I mean, you know, MPP. And let me say that I'm not hearing this for the first time. Sometimes, as well, they associate me with um, NDC. <laughs> you know, He's so, very happy man. Yeah. So what makes you so happy, so, Prof? Are you are you living your dream as an economics teacher or? Uh, yes, um, or I'm very happy. You happy or what? I'm very happy when I get opportunity to contribute to the discussion of our, our country. I love Ghana so much. I have had a number of opportunities to stay outside Ghana, but I always say, let me be here. So far, we're getting yes, and you know, unfortunately, do you want to run I, for political office? Not at all. I don't like politics. So as we as, as I sit here, I don't have. I've never been a cadre member of any political party. All yes, my life. you support Nana Kufuado. All my life. I mean, he's one of the fantastic leaders we have. Oh, had. my goodness. <laughs> Look, I'm telling you. And as we, are, as we have started the journey, yeah. no, I want people to come and debate it that these are not true. These are the figures that are there. We should have seen. You see, President Mahama says something, and I'll always clap for him. You know, uh, he did so well putting all the things we've been thinking about just one day in a sentence. That Ghanaians have short memories. He said that? No, he said that. And, and he did so well. In fact, I agree 100% with him. You know, all of a sudden, people talk as if there was no 2014. People talk as if there was no 2015. 2015, the economy grew at 2.1%. At the first half of the year, this economy that they say is collapsed, when the economy is collapsed, and we would look at it from the growth I mean, perspective, when the economy grows negatively for appreciable length of time, that's where we use it worse. But when we have not even grown negatively, people say we are collapsed. Now, if you are calling this economy collapse, economy that at, at the first half quarter of the uh, year, it grew at 4.2%. Second quarter, it grew at 3.2%. And so, averagely, that gives you about 3.75, isn't it? Yes, correct. But uh, 2015, the economy grew 2.1%. And so, if you, 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 you don't look at that as collapse, then you rather want to refer to the average economy growing at 3.75 as collapsed economy, then I have a problem with you. You know, uh, in 2015, there was no global crisis. There wasn't. And yet the economy grew at 2.1%. That's abysmal. Very, very I mean, abysmal. You know, 20, 2016, that it even did well, it was 3.4. It was 3.4. And so you, you go and look at Nando's growth rate, 6.5, 6.5. You know, uh, I, I don't want, I don't give 2017 growth rate to Nanado. Mm -hmm. You know why? No. Because of the um, oil. It was oil inspired. Because mm -hmm. you see, uh, even if Nanado had not won, and President Mahama had won, 2017, the growth would have been higher. Okay. That's because, uh, yeah, we, got, we ended the growth rate with 3.4. Mm -hmm. You know, and so that, anytime I'm, talk, I'm talking about 2017, uh, the non-oil sector grew at 4.9%. Mm. So I, when I'm looking at Nanado in 2017, I look at non-oil sector. Mm -hmm. You know, because that indeed was the actual growth. Mm -hmm. Without the oil. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's the same story I always want to tell people. And when you say, it, hey, uh, Kufo uh, discovered oil in commercial quantity somewhere 2007. Mm -hmm. And even people said that it was Adongo, whatever. But at the end of the day, we have to start production of oil. And when, because we've never produced oil before, and we have to start it, it, became, it, 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 it was a huge mm -hmm. component of our GDP. And so that year, the oil, the mining and quarrying subsector grew over 200%, 208%. Uh -huh. That was not normal. Mm -hmm. That was not normal. No, totally. The industrial sector grew over 40%. That was not normal because the industrial sector is where we have the mining and you know, quarrying, where the oil sector is. Mm -hmm. So if you see these figures, it is clear that it, uh, that growth was oil in part, and we grew over 14%. That has been the highest in our economic history. You know, and so the same way, I wouldn't say that it was because of any effort of that government that year, 2011, that's why we got that growth. I will also say the same thing, that 2017 growth was oil inspired, and it wasn't an adult growth. But um, you push... When, uh, from 2018, look at the other sectors, telecommunication, look at the uh, agricultural sector. That was uh, almost dying. Oh, 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 oh.
Has Christianity always been one of the religions in the world to you? Oh, hallelujah. Christianity is not a religion.